Hi everyone, this is Jackie from the Myra Stitch and Post and today I want to show you one of my favorite tools that I have in the store and that is my quick and easy mitered binding tool. And you can see by this project here we have stitched out a beautiful placemat and I have taken the back of my placemat and I have brought it to the front and created these amazing mitered corners. So what I'd like to do now and show you how to do this on this project that I have here. So you can see that I have trimmed up uh, leaving about an inch and a quarter. There's the backing of my fabric as you can see. And now what I'm going to do is show you how the mitered binding tool works. So if you can see I have a little line on my mitered binding tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line and I'm going to line it up on the white edge of my fabric. And I'm now going to take my marking tool and I'm going to draw a stitching line. And I want to just point out that I have drawn the line from the first fold to the first fold. And this, again, I'm going to just reiterate, this is my stitching line. Once I have that stitching line marked, I'm going to simply take a pin and I'm going to put it through where the drawn line meets the folded line and I'm going to pull it back up to the top and what that's going to do it's going to pull my corner together just like this. Once I have it pulled together I'm going to take another couple of pins and I'm just going to pin across. Now I'm going to invite you over to my sewing room and I'm going to show you how I stitch this down using my beautiful Husqvarna Epic 980Q. Hi everybody, we're back now over by the sewing machine and now you can see I'm sitting in front of this beautiful Epic 980Q sewing machine. And I just want to show you once again, we are going to stitch on this line, again starting at that fold. So I'm simply going to put it underneath my foot, I'm going to bring my needle down, and I'm going to put my presser foot down. Now something I like to do when I'm doing these corners is shorten my stitch length to 1.5. So you can see here on my machine I have shortened the stitch length to 1.5. Alright, now that I've got that done I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward and a couple of back stitches just to secure it. There's going to be a lot of pressure and secure it once again and I'm done. Alright everybody, we're back at the sewing table and I'm going to trim off this dog ear and I like to take the notch in the corner just to take the bulk out and then I'm just going to trim that up one quarter of an inch. Now what I'd like to do is put my finger in there and I like to fingernail crease that seam open. Get my fingers in there. Give it a little press with my thumbnail and I'm now going to just flip it and another one of my favorite tools is a corner poker outer certainly not my scissors but you can see just how nice and sharp and of a corner I have on this placemat so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to do the other three corners and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how we top stitch this down. All right, we're back now and you can see that I've gone and I've given my placemat a press just to make it nice and sharp, nice sharp edges on it. I again wanted to show you the quick and easy mitered binding tool that is available here at the Myra Stitch and Post. And now what I'm going to do is I would like to use my Epic 980Q just to show you how I've top stitched it. Now, before I go that, I want to just show you quickly um, my edge stitching foot or edge joining foot that I have on my machine. I'm going to show you how I like to use that. Some people like to use a left edge foot. This happens to be my favorite foot. You can see there's a little guide in the center of the foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that guide up with the edge of my binding. Then I'm going to put my presser foot down. Once my foot is down, I'm not going to watch the needle because I am going to move my needle over which I can do on my Epic and I like to move my needle over to position of 1.8 so now when I stitch I'm not watching the needle I'm going to be watching the guide on the edge of my binding 
Now, while I'm stitching, I also want to just let you know that I have elongated my stitch length to 3.0 because this is a top stitch. It's like you're quilting. You don't want it too short. If it's too short, it doesn't look nearly as nice. And I'm simply going to stitch all the way down to my corner. When I get to the corner, use my needle down so that my presser foot comes up. And I'm going to try and stop so that my needle stops right in the seam that I created. And now I'm simply going to pivot and I'm going to continue sewing. And again, I'm not watching the needle. It's kind of like when you're driving, it's always best to look ahead of the road. That way you stay on track. Same with sewing. If I watch the guide, the needle is going to go wherever that guide goes. And I'm just going to continue sewing all the way through until I get to the next corner. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Slow down as I get there. Stop. Just make sure that little guide goes under. Very carefully, I want to sew until my needle goes into the seam. Pivot. And away we are again. All right. So we are finishing up, just coming around our last corner, going to join up where the where we started, do just a quick little reinforcement stitch, and I'm all done. Going to cut my thread, and there you go. You've got a beautiful placemat that we stitched out completely in our designer epic. We've also got it quilted. It was all done in the hoop. I brought the back to the front to do a self binding and we're ready. Ready to put it on the kitchen table and have dinner. Now, one more thing I'd like to talk to everybody about, and I see this problem all the time, is that gals like to use some of the decorative stitches that they have in their machines. And there's no reason why you shouldn't. But the mistake that everybody makes is instead of anchoring their binding down with a straight stitch like I have done here, they go directly to their, their decorative stitch and what will happen is you get distortion and twisting. So to avoid that from happening, anchor your binding down first with a straight stitch, then come back and do your decorative stitch over top. This is Jackie from Myra Stitch and Post and I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial on self binding using the quick and easy mitered binding tool. Call Myra Stitch and Post at 727-3423.